Uh, so, uh, good afternoon. My name is Gibert, and I'm a second year PhD student in numerical relativity in Queen Mary uh, University of London. And today I'll talk about my work in the 3 plus 1 formulation of the Einstein scalar Gauss wave theory. Um, I'll start with an introduction of this modified theory of gravity and a uh, gauge that is useful for the formulation of the problem. Uh, then I will proceed to uh, present my own results. First, the explicit form of the of the of the um, equation in the three plus one formulation, and then I will sketch the proof of the well poseness. Um, uh, afterwards, I will uh, show the the results of the simulation that that they have um, executed so far, and then I'll draw the conclusions of the work. So Einstein scalar Gauss Bonnet theory, known as ESGB, is uh, nowadays a very uh, well known. A modified theory of gravity that is a subset of the Holandeschi theories that uh, have been already talked here today, and that is the, the most general theory of gravity in four dimension with metric uh, tensor scalar field that led to second order equation of motion. On the other hand, the Einstein, the ESGB is also is also outstanding since it comes out by minimally coupling a scalar field to the Einstein Gauss Bonnet theory, which is a type of law of, of low flow theory that is another group of uh, theories of gravities uh, here of arbitrary dimensions that lead to second order equation of motion. So uh, the action of ESGB uh, is uh, this one here. We have uh, first the the, the Ricci uh, scalar from the Einstein sector, then the, the, the kinetic part of the scalar field, and then the Gauss the Gauss Bonnet uh, term um, with uh, with a coupling of the scalar field that um, that I have uh, chosen to be uh, linear. Um, so, um, from this action, the equation of motion that follow are these ones, uh, where, um, where the Jim Lewis the Einstein tensor, and then uh, we have uh, all this uh, expression. Um, in order to obtain a stable a numerical uh, simulation, one has to wisely uh, uh, wisely choose the degrees of the degrees of freedom of the system. As has been shown in the recent literature, some theories of modified gravity, such as ESGB, are not well posed with the usual gauge that uh, works for Einstein uh, GR equation. So that's why uh, one should um, one should uh, uh, think of uh, alternatives. Um, analogously, as it is uh, done in numerical relativity for GR, we add to the Einstein's, uh, Einstein ten uh, tensor some terms that uh, that uh, do vanish when the constraints here denoted as C mu are uh, satisfied. Note that here the H mu are the degrees of freedom of the system. So the difference between this uh, modified harmonic gauge and uh, and the um, and the gauge that is usually uh, usually used with uh, um, in um, in a plane a GR is uh, is that uh, this uh, extra extra uh, term here and also the constraints are expressed in function of uh, of different metrics. So here G, G tilde and here uh, G hat that do not coincide with the uh, with the uh, physical metric. So they they are in particular um, they are in effect auxiliary metrics that are nested with respect to the physical metric G mu nu as is shown in this uh, diagram, so that the, their null cones are nested one uh, in each other. Uh, as we will see, this avoids a degeneracy that uh, would happen if uh, all three metrics were, were the same as, as happens uh, in GR. Uh, now, uh, yeah, in the this line, this is only uh, to show how the three plus one ESGB equation uh, look like. So these are expressed in the CCZ form, CCZ for uh, conformal variables, uh, plus the uh, scalar field and uh, its curvature. Um, so uh, these equations have been obtained by um, by computing the, the corresponding tangential and normal uh, projections of the covariant for the equation. And as we see, the gauss bonnet terms have been, uh, uh, have been treated as if they were matter part of the matter sector, as we see with this uh, rho GB and this uh, JGB, which are the terms that are multiplied by the coupling constant uh, lambda. Uh, we also see that if, uh, if, the, if we set the coupling constant and also the functions of the modified harmonic gauge, namely B of X and A of X to zero, then we recover the, uh, the, the GR equations in the CCZ4 formulation. Uh, then in the in the next slide I have I have the the remaining um, the remaining equations. 
um, that uh, the the the, um, the remaining equations um, that here uh, need um, and uh, for these variables we need to invert the matrix in order to solve the problem. Okay. Um, so once the explicit form of the equation is found, we can proceed to study uh, its well poseness. Uh, to prove it, we need to show that the system is strongly hyperbolic when weakly coupled. That is, when the, uh, when the coupling of the system is small in comparison with the physical length of the system. Uh, for this, one needs uh, to find the principal part of the, of the, line, of the linearized uh, system, as uh, um, that, that we denote uh, in, in this form, where uh, P is the, um, um, where U are the uh, CZ for variables, as well as the scalar field and its curvature and the gauge uh, variables. And then we have that P is the Einstein sector of, the, of this matrix, and then Q is the perturbed uh, part. Um, so the, uh, the 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 evolution of the, um, the evolution of equation of the CZ for variables um, are the de are the degrees of freedom of the of the uh, of the system, and we have chosen the the the, the degrees of freedom h mu so that we obtain this uh, equation this evolution equation here, which are a modified version of the puncture gauge uh, evolution equation that are uh, equations that are well posed uh, in. Uh, um, that form a, a well posed uh, 3 plus 1 problem in uh, GR. Um, so, uh, for proving a strong hyperbolicity, one, uh, what one needs to show is that uh, this matrix, so the, the, the Einstein, the matrix from the Einstein sector plus the perturbed one, is diagonalizable. And uh, this is not uh, an, 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 an easy uh, problem. And the way uh, in which uh, um, it has been done is, is uh, uh, first by, um, by computing the eigenvalues of the Einstein sector, which are well known. We have uh, three, uh, three sectors. So on the one hand, the physical eigenvalues, then the gauge condition violating ones, and then the pure gauge. So uh, we see that uh, here in the case, uh, if uh, the, 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 um, MA, um, the modified harmonic gauge function A and B uh, were zero, then we would have some added um, uh, degeneracy that we are avoiding here. Um, so then, once we have uh, these eigenvalues, for each eigenvalue with a certain multiplicity, uh, we compute uh, this matrix with uh, the, uh, the perturbed matrix Q. And so, if uh, one uh, can um, prove that every one of these matrices is uh, diagonalizable, then uh, we are done. And this is exactly what was done, what, uh, what uh, can be done and, and has been done for the, and I have done for the, um, ESGB uh, problem in the three plus one formulation. Um, so um, now that uh, now now that uh, uh, we we have the um, the questions in the three plus one form and that uh, and that um, a strong hyperbolicity is proved, then uh, uh, um, we can pro I can proceed to show the the simulations that I have executed so far. So this has been this has been done with GR Jumbo, which is a numerical relativity the, uh, code that works with adaptive uh, uh, measuring fragment. And after implementing the ESGR uh, equations in GR Jumbo with the, uh, with the corresponding tests, I have been able to obtain uh, a hairy black holes by using initial data of uh, of Kerr black holes. So here left we can see the, the evolution of the of the scalar field for different different values of the um, of the Kerr uh, um, of the Kerr momentum. Uh, so this is still some provisional uh, results. So we see that uh, here for the for the um, high value of the spin parameter, there still needs to be some readjustment of the of the damping terms that uh, that damp the, the the constraints, and then here right we can see uh, um, uh, a slide at a, at, a, at a given time of the of the scalar fields show, showing how uh, a hairy black hole looks like in the um, Einstein scalar uh, Gauss um, Gauss bonnet. Um, okay, so uh, to wrap up, the, the results that uh, have been obtained uh, so far are the are, on, are the, the explicit equations of uh, ESGB in uh, three, in a three plus one formulation, which is a uh, well post, and that has been successfully implemented to obtain a uh, hairy black holes. Now uh, the next the next step uh, to go is uh, to obtain um, a binary of um, 
of two hairy black holes in this uh, ESGB theory. Uh, yeah, so that, that's all uh, I wanted to say. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Okay, thank you, Lieber. And um, do we have any questions for the last speaker? So I'm not an expert in this area. I have a naive question. Um, these uh, class of theories should violate the scale invariance of GR, right? So that you would see very different properties for black holes that are supermassive versus ones that are stellar mass. Is that correct? Yeah, well, in GR we can't have hairy black holes, so that's why. Uh, and, and, and in this theory, uh, do um, um, if, if we evolve this theory from uh, from uh, from initial condition where we have a scalar field, then we can evolve to this this kind of uh, solution, this kind of black holes that are not in GR. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.